So it's happening. I'm gonna put 1200 watts of solar panels on the roof of this RV. I don't wanna drill any holes to install the panels and I don't want it to be difficult and I don't wanna be worried about stuff flying off the roof when I'm on the highway. Hi, my name is Reese and if you've been following along, you know that we bought this 1998 Class A RV that I've been fixing up and giving it some upgrades. I've actually dreamed about putting solar on the roof since we got it, but I've been worried about leaks, the added weight, or worse, panels flying off the roof. So not too long ago, I saw another YouTuber post about these kinds of solar panels. So I reached out to him and I said, would you recommend those solar panels? And he said, yes. So here's what one of these solar panels looks like. This is something that I've never seen before in person. This is a 200 watt solar panel all rolled up. This is from a company called Bouge RV. Now, full disclosure, I did reach out to them and ask them if I could have some to test. And they said, sure, as long as you agree to put them on your RV roof. And I said, deal. So this is not a regular type of solar panel that you might be used to seeing. You could never bend a monocrystalline panel like this because they're very fragile. This thing uses a technology called SIGs, copper, indium, gallium, uh, desilinides, solar cells, uh, something like that. What's crazy to me is that this is a 200 watt solar panel. In my tests, I've actually gotten more than 200 watts out of this thing. It weighs seven pounds and you can bend it all kinds of crazy ways and it still produces power. And it has adhesive on the back here. All you have to do is peel off the plastic and then you can stick it down. One concern I had with the adhesive approach was how hot the underside of the panel was going to get because there's so little room for airflow. So one of the first things that I did was I put my temperature probe between the panel and the roof on a warm sunny day to see what kind of temperatures I might be dealing with. The adhesive on these panels is basically butyl tape, which is very sticky. And this kind is rated to about 80 degrees Celsius or 170 degrees Fahrenheit. So after letting it sit for a while, the maximum temperature I saw was about 106 degrees and the solar production was about 150 watts, which I thought was very good because the panel wasn't pointing directly at the sun. So now it's time to get them installed. I was pretty excited about these kind of panels because I didn't really like the other solutions that I had seen online for installing solar on your RV without drilling holes. The others that I had seen mostly were using tape on the exterior edges of either a monocrystalline flexible or rigid panel. So the first thing was to plan the layout for where all the panels would go, and I knew I needed to get this space where the TV antenna was, so I took it off. Now, because I only wanna make one hole in this roof for the two supply wires to go into the cabin, my plan is to use the existing structures on the roof to hold down all the cables. Now, when you're planning a solar project, not only do you have to think about shade, but you have to think about voltage and current that you expect and you need to make sure that your solar controller can handle it. The one I'm going to use has a maximum input of 60 volts and 30 amps. Each of these solar panels is 25 volts and 8 amps when it's in full sun and so what I'm going to do to stay under these limits right here is have two in series which adds up the voltage to around 50 volts and then three of those in parallel. And when you parallel them, you add up the amperage. So that's about 24 amps. And you can see I'm under these values. Next was to prepare the roof for attaching the panels. I cleaned the roof using Dawn dish soap and a microfiber mop as a first pass. And then I used Simple Green with a microfiber cloth to scrub the area clean and washed it with water and made sure it was dry. Now with all the panels basically where I want them, I marked all the corners and it's time to stick them down. So for the solar panels where I'm gonna put the junction box on this end, because it has the adhesive strip all the way across, I'm gonna cut a little channel, sort of like a weep hole, just in case there's any moisture uh, or liquid that gets in there, so it'll have a chance to get out. I felt like I was breaking world records for solar panel installation with these panels and adhesive. I first tried the technique of peeling off a little bit on the edge first to get it aligned right, because once you lay this adhesive down, it's so sticky that it's not going to move, so you kind of get one shot. Then I folded the panel back to remove the plastic in stages, and because the top was aligned and already stuck down, the panel was going where I wanted it. And once the panel was down, I ran over the top again with my hands to put some pressure on it and make sure everything was all attached. And so installing this panel took about seven minutes, definitely the fastest that I have ever installed a solar panel. So for the next one, I tried a different and a little bit more risky technique. I removed the plastic and exposed all of the adhesive at once, and then I curled the panel down onto the RV roof. It would have been easier to have another person helping me to get things aligned right, but I was able to install this one in under five minutes. So it was a little awkward to do it that way, but it was a little bit faster. And this is officially the fastest solar panel I've ever installed. There are a few other features to these thin film solar panels that are great for this application. Because they're not fragile, you can actually walk on them without damaging them. Bouge RV even has a video of a guy hitting them with a baseball bat. So I'm not concerned about stepping on them as I'm walking along the RV roof. They also have way more bypass diodes than a typical solar panel. A typical panel might only have a few diodes, like this 100 watt panel here has two of them. And their purpose is to reduce the effect of any shade on the panel. 
these thin film panels have 48 bypass diodes, so they actually do very well when part of the panel is shaded. So I'm not too concerned about any shadows from the air conditioners or the other things on the roof. So considering it took me about five or six minutes on average to install each of these panels, I was able to put on 1200 watts of solar panels on my RV roof without drilling holes in about 30 to 40 minutes. Next step is to make custom extension cables for each pair of solar panels, and I need to get these wire pairs to the back of the RV where I have the parallel connection. And as I'm guessing on the length of these positive and negative cables, I'm also thinking about how to route them so they can be attached to these other roof structures. For the parallel connection, I'm going to use these compact three to one MC4 connectors, which means I need to make my own MC4 connections on those extension cables. So the first thing you need to do is strip the wire. Then if you have an MC4 kit, which makes this job a lot easier, you take the male or female tip, use the included crimper to grip it to the wire, then put on the cap and the watertight gland, then the connector itself. Then you use the plastic tools in the kit to tighten everything down, and now you have a good watertight MC4 connection. In addition to a generous amount of zip ties to hold the cables in place, I'm also using a white slotted wire loom to give the wires a little bit more protection. So for structures like this that don't have anything to zip tie onto, I'm just gonna take a big zip tie and get it all the way around and then I can do little zip ties onto the big zip tie. So originally I was going to route the wires around the outside of the RV, but decided it would be easier to drill one hole to get the wires to the solar controller. I got rid of a TV coax output in the ceiling, and since there was already a hole there, I could see that I wouldn't accidentally cut into any existing wires. Then after routing the wires through, I used a transition cover with cable glands and tightened them down to keep water out. Then I used a generous amount of lap sealant and let it dry. Inside, I added a disconnect switch for an easy way to isolate the solar panels if I wanted, and I was able to run the wires through a hole that I had already made to connect my batteries to the electrical bay. For the end of these wires, I added MC4 connectors for flexibility so I can use them on my current solar controller, and if I wanted, easily connect them to any capable power station. So here's what the final product looks like. All the solar panels are down, wires are in place, the uh, transition is done down there to the bottom and hooked up to the battery system. So let me do some tests on it and see how it goes. Let's do a wind test and then let's see what our solar production is. Let's talk about a wind test. One of the concerns that I have is, is the adhesive going to hold on this roof? Bouge RV told me that these have been tested up to 93 miles per hour. It might even hold even higher than that. I'm gonna test it with my leaf blower, which can do 145 mile per hour gust. And I'm gonna put it right on the edge and let's see what happens. So there was no movement at all on the edge, and when I even try to tug on these things, they are on there so tightly, I have no concern that they're gonna fly off the roof. Actually, I would have a higher concern with rigid glass panels up on my roof. If they fell off, I don't know what would happen. At least with these guys, they're seven pounds each, and they're mostly like a big plastic roll. Okay, let's check on the solar production. There's currently no shade on the solar panels, and where the angle of the sun is at right now, it's making over a thousand watts of power. And I'm really happy with that because I put down 1200 watts of solar and you almost never get the stated rating, especially when panels are laying on a flat roof. When I was up there, I also noticed that they were covered with a lot of pollen. So I'm actually very happy with over a thousand watts of power. Probably my biggest concern up here is if there will be any effect on the adhesive between the wood decking and the rubber roof. When I first got this RV, I noticed there was already one spot where there was a bubble in the roof and thankfully it hasn't gotten any larger. So far, these panels have exceeded my expectations, so I'm curious to see how they will hold up. They currently cost more per watt than their monocrystalline equivalent, but for an RV situation, not only is it easy to stick down, there are no holes, so you don't have to worry about leaks, and you also save a lot of time. Thank you to Bouge RV for providing these solar panels. Post any questions or comments below, and if you want to see some other upgrades and fixes to this RV, check out this video here.